Hey guys, this is Subhash Mishra, your test coach. Today we will discuss a very important topic in API testing. That is, what are the different types of status code? If you will go for any SDET interview, you will definitely face one question around status code. So, what is this status code? Why it is required? And what are the different HTTP status code available? I will explain you everything in detail. Keep watching the video till the end. One more thing, if you are very new to my channel and watching my video for the first time, then I have a long list of interview questions and tutorial videos for you. I will give the playlist link in the video description. Please go through that. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so you will not miss any further notification. So let's start. So the first thing we will understand what is HTTP status code. When you want to browse or open a website in your computer, what you do? First you will open a browser and then type that URL and then press enter. Then that website will load for you. So what happens in between? Your browser sends a HTTP request to the website server and then server responds to the browser's request with a HTTP response which contains a three digit code that is known as your HTTP status code. So HTTP status codes are like messages from the server which let you know how things went when it received the request to view a certain page. This kind of messages are returned every time your browser interacts with a server even if you do not see them. You would have definitely observed some 404 status code like this in Google page right. It is usually when something goes wrong that you might see one displayed in your browser. This is the surface way of saying something is not right. That is why you are getting this 404 error. Okay. So, if you want to see the status code which your browser does not normally show you, you can use your developer tool and you can see it in your console. Go to your browser, right click developers tools and then see in the console. Okay. But if you are using direct APIs, then it is easy and you can see it in your API response. For example, you are doing API testing and you want to see it in your postman tool. right? So, you can easily see it in your. So, we will go next and we will see what are the different types of HTTP status codes available. Okay. So, there are five ranges of HTTP status codes. Each range defines where the error was encountered and the number defines what the actual error was. So, here you can see there are five different series. So, 1xx is nothing but 100 series, it is informational. Okay. Then 200 series, you will be more familiar with this 200 series, it is more of success. Then we have 300 series, so it is more of redirect the requested page has moved somewhere else. Then we have 400 series, this is also very frequently used, this is more of client error, there is something wrong with the way the browser asks for the page. Then we have 500 series, 500 series also very frequently used, this is more of server error, something went wrong with the way the server tried to send the page. So now I will show you in detail what are these 200, 400 or 500 series. Okay, and what are the different status code you used to get when you will do this API testing. Okay, so, we will simply go to our browser and we will see this status codes. Okay. So, just go to Google and search for HTTP status code. So, this is the Wikipedia for HTTP status code. So, I was just telling you right 100, 200, 300, 400 and 500 series. So, you will get information about each and everything what is this 100, what is this 101, 102, 103, 200. Okay. So, when you are testing and you are getting some status code which you do not know about it. So, just come to this page and you will able to understand what is this error message. Okay. And there are one more page also, I will just show you. You can go to this website also, REST API tutorial. Okay. I will give this website link in the video description. Okay. You can get all this information, what is this status code. Okay. So, here you can see few of the star marks, right? 200, 
200 okay 201 so these are mainly frequently used okay i'm also telling with my experience these are the status code you will get in your actual projects okay so i'll just explain about all these status codes okay so first is 100 okay so what is this 100 series means right so this 100 level status codes tell you that the request you have made to the server is still in progress for some reason okay so if you'll see 100 continue this means the server has received your browser's request header and it is now ready for the request body to be sent as well okay similarly we have 101 101 is mainly for switching the protocols your browser has asked the server to change the protocols and the server has compiled then we have 102 which is processing okay again this is also used for processing similarly we have uh, 103 also that returns some response headers before the rest of the server's response is ready okay anyway these are not very frequently used this 100 series is you will not use it very frequently you will mainly use this 200 400 and 500 series okay so let's discuss about this 200 series what is this 200 okay is used for so you know whenever you are updating a request okay so you are testing some api and you are updating some payload okay so in that time you will get 200 okay it means everything is okay so this is the code that is delivered when a web page or resource acts exactly the way it expected to okay so if everything is fine you will get 200 okay then we have 201 201 is basically created okay the server has fulfilled the browser's request and as a result it has created a new resource okay if i'll show you one example so this is the request response website okay so here you see first of all list of all users we are listing all users what is the response we are getting 200 okay so the status code is 200 similarly if you want to list a single user what you are getting you are getting 200 it means everything is okay in that point of time you are getting 200 then when you are getting 201 when you are creating a resource okay see while creating a resource you got 201 okay so if you will create something you will get 201 but if you are listing something if you are fetching something you are doing a put update put or update in that point of time you are getting 200 okay in patch also you will get 200 okay so basically if everything is okay in that point of time you will get 200 okay but if you are creating something in that point of time you will get 201 201 is basically used to create something new okay so here we are creating a new resource that's why we are getting 201 okay here i hope you understand what is the difference between 200 and 201 similarly you have 202 202 is used for accepted 203 for non authoritative information okay 204 is used for no content okay so this code means that the server has successfully proceed the request but is not going to return any content okay so basically you will not receive any content but your server has processed the request in that point of time you will get 204 no content okay then we have 300 series okay so 300 series is mainly used for redirection okay so redirection is the process used to communicate that a resource has been moved to a new location okay so your resource has been moved to a new location so there are several http status codes okay so you can see 300 301 302 300 is for multiple choices 301 is moved permanently 302 is a found okay again this is not frequently used so i am not going in detail then we'll see 400 status code this is very very important okay these are the error codes specifying that there is a fault with your browser or your request okay so definitely you will get questions what is 400 what is 401 what is the difference between 403 and 404 okay so you should understand this 400 errors okay 400 status codes first we'll see 400 bad request it means the server cannot return a response due to an error on client end. okay so if there is some problem or if there is a validation error in that point of time you will get 400 bad request then we have 401 unauthorized 
अनऑथराइज्ड मींस यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड राइट सम ऑथेंटिकेशन और ऑथराइजेशन रिक्वायर्ड ओके सो दिस इज रिटर्न बाय द सर्वर व्हेन द टारगेट रिसोर्स लैक्स वैलिड ऑथेंटिकेशन क्रेडेंशियल्स इफ योर क्रेडेंशियल्स आर रॉन्ग ओके इन दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम यू विल गेट 401 अनऑथराइज्ड देन वी हैव 403 403 फॉरबिडन एक्सेस टू दैट रिसोर्स इज फॉरबिडन This code is returned when a user attempts to access something that they don't have permission to view. Okay, so they don't have permission to view, but still they are trying to access. In that point of time, you will get 403. Then 404. So 404 is not found. The requested resource was not found. This is the most common error message. Okay, you will get 404 not found if something is not present. What is the difference between 403 and 404? In 403, you are trying to find something for which you don't have permission to view. But in 404, it is not at all present. Okay, it is not there, and in that point of time, you are trying to find it. So that is the difference between 403 and 404. Then we have 409 conflict. Okay, so A 409 status code means that the server could not process your browser's request because there is a conflict with the relevant resource. Okay, so sometimes this conflict happens, right? In that point of time, you will get 409. Then we have 429. Okay, here 429 is not a star mark, but still I'm explaining about 429 because I have seen with my experience this is used. Okay, it means too many request. So this is generated by the server. when the user has sent too many request in a given amount of time so sometime in your projects you will see the apis has a rate limit so this rate limit will be used in your project for your apis to secure those apis because no one can hit this apis so many times okay for example in next 1 minute you can use this api for maximum 5 times okay if will use more than that in that point of time you will get 429 too many request okay so that's why this is very important okay now let me show you this examples 400 series examples so first we are talking about this 400 bad request right so if you will see here register unsuccessful let's see what is the status code here see here it is 400 because something not happened right it is a bad request our request didn't succeed properly okay if it would have been a success we would have got 200 if it is a failure then we will get 400 okay similarly here if you will see single resource not found if resource not found means 404 okay because resource is not available okay let's see here in login unsuccessful what it is it is again 400 because login is not successful okay single user not found this is also 404 Okay, I don't think we have here uh, 401 or unauthorized something. Okay, unauthorized means you don't have access. But anyway, it is not there, so I'll not able to show you. Okay, so these are the few examples of 400 series. Now we'll move to the 500 series. 500 status codes are also considered as errors, but these are the server error. 400 is the client error, but 500 is the server error. And the most important is. This 500 internal server error. Okay, so whenever you see 500 internal server error, means there is a error from your server. There was an error on the server, and the request could not be completed. Okay, so this is generic code that simply means internal server error. Something went wrong on the server, and the requested resource was not delivered. Okay, so if there is a 500 status code it means there is a internal server error okay then we have 501 not implemented okay it means something is not implemented in that point of time we will get 501 not implemented error then we have 502 bad gateway this error code typically means one server has received an invalid response okay so in that point of time you will get 502 bad gateway then you have a 503 service channel unavailable okay so when you will get this error when the server is unavailable to handle this request right now for example you are doing some deployment okay and in that point of time your server is not available and you are trying to hit the server to get some request in that point of time you will get 503 okay because this in that point of time service is not available okay 
So if service is not available, you will get 503 error. Similarly, 504 get to a timeout. Okay, if there are certain times server is not able to process the request in that point of time, in that point of time you will get 504. Okay, so these are the different 500 series error. Okay, so that's all. I hope now you will be very clear what are the different types of status code. Okay, and when it is used, you can always refer all these links okay to understand about what are the different status codes i try to explain you the most important status codes which are used in our project okay if there are questions in your interview you can explain them well okay i hope this video is helpful for you thank you if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section i'll try to explain it please like share and subscribe to my channel